All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? All my people in Manhattan, the Bronx, Queens, all the Staten Island, my homeboy, Brooklyn. Back at another video. And, excuse me, I'm going to do this video on the 2020 Basketball Hall of Fame class. Of course, headlined by the Big Ticket, the Big Fundamental, and the Black Mamba, a.k.a. Kevin Garnett, Tim Duncan, and Kobe Bryant. All these guys are icons of their era, icons of the league in general. You know, all came in the league year after year after year. Kevin Garnett came in 95, Kobe came in 96. Timmy came in 97, and I just want to go through all their careers real, real quick, you know. You know, it's unfortunate Kobe's not going to be alive to give his Hall of Fame speech. You know, now the rules are you have to wait three years after you're, you retire to become eligible. Had they done that when Kobe retired, he'd been eligible in 2019, so he'd been alive to give a speech. You know, it's unfortunate, but hopefully Michael Jordan can present him and welcome him in, welcome him in very well. But and let's get to these guys, starting with the big ticket. Mr. Kevin Garnett, who at the time was known as the kid. You see this picture here, he had the nice smile. Of course, he, Kevin Garnett came in the league in 1995 out of high school, fifth overall pick in the 95 draft, and he kind of reopened that trend. You know, you know, it's been a, like 20 plus years since an NBA player came out of, since a player came out of high school. The last being Moses Malone out of Petersburg High School in Petersburg, Virginia, and I believe 1972. So, Kevin Garnett kind of started it back up, made that cool again. And, of course, it led to Kobe and T-Mac and LeBron and Dwight Howard. And people people kind of don't give KG credit for that. But anyway, Kevin Garnett played in the NBA for 21 seasons, 95 through 2016. He made 15 All-Star games, four All-NBA All, -Star, All -NBA first teams, led the league in rebounding four times. He was named MVP in 2004 and the Defensive Player of the Year in 2008. Of course, in Minnesota, he spent his first 12 years, you know, he get them to the playoffs. They get bounced in the first round to 2004. His MVP season, he um, he he teamed up with the Trust Brewell and Sam Cassell, and the Timberwolves won the won 58 games at the number one seed in the Western Conference, but unfortunately lost in the conference finals to Kobe Bryant and the Lakers. Okay, his David Stern giving Kevin Garnett his MVP trophy after the 2007 season. You know that the Minnesota Timberwolves trade decided to trade Kevin Garnett. To a team that he could think he could win a championship with, and that being the Boston Celtics with Paul Pierce and Ray Allen. That 2008 season, Kevin Garnett obviously was the Defensive Player of the Year. The Celtics won 66 games, and they beat the Lakers in six games and blew them out in Game Six to win the 17th championship in franchise history and first for Kevin Garnett. Anything's possible. <laughs> Anybody remember that shit? Anybody? No, just me. Okay. <laughs> Shit was hilarious, but um, yeah, KG spent the next five odd years in Boston until after the 2013 season. They traded him and Paul Pierce to the Brooklyn Nets, spent two seasons there, and then went to the Minnesota Timberwolves and closed out his career. It's unfortunate that KG and the owner, Clinton Glenn Taylor, had a severe falling out because KG deserves to have a number of tie, but now Alex Rodriguez owns the Timberwolves. Hopefully, A-Rod will offer KG a role, as he should. Okay, anyway, let's move on to the big fundamental, Mr. Tim Duncan. The number one overall pick of the 1997 NBA draft out of Wake Forest. He's originally from the U.S. Virgin Islands. Of course, we all know Timmy's career. 19 years with the Spurs. He, everything the Spurs are known for today is because started with Tim Duncan. You know, five-time champion, three finals MVPs, two league MVPs, 15-time 15, 15 All-Star, 10 All-NBA first teams, eight All-Defensive first teams, rookie of the year. Like, this dude was just you know, a monster, you know. He teamed up with David Robinson his rookie year, you know. David Robinson got into the Spurs to the playoffs years prior, but couldn't win the big one because he, well, he didn't have that it factor, that alpha. You know, he got cooked and embarrassed by Hakeem Olajuwon in the 95 Conference Finals the year he was the MVP, and that kind of ruined his reputation around the league. In 96, 97, you know, he was hurt throughout the whole year. The Spurs ended up winning 20 games, and that allowed them to draft Tim Duncan. And I believe in Tim Duncan's rookie year, they got to the Conference Finals, if I remember correctly. And in 1999, they won the championship by defeating my New York Knicks in five games in the lockout year. People say, oh, that was a lockout, 50 games, so should it be an asterisk next to it? No problem. Tim Duncan and David Robinson, along with Tony Parker, young Tony Parker and young Manu Ginobili, and Bruce Bowen, they returned to the NBA Finals and defeated the New Jersey Nets in six games to claim their second NBA championship. Two years later, Dave Robinson retired after that 03 championship. 2005 with, with Brent Barry and Robert Ory as additions. They defeated the Detroit Pistons in seven games. 2007, they swept the Cleveland Cavaliers. 
It was a seven-year championship drop between 2007 and 2014. You know, the Spurs got to the finals with 2013 with second-year star Kawhi Leonard. They lost, of course, on that Ray Allen miracle shot. <laughs> you know, we're not going to get into all that. They lost in overtime. Then they lost game seven. And then in 2014, they came back for revenge. The Spurs had this new beautiful style of basketball, share the ball, get the open man, and to play hard-nosed defense. And they destroyed the Miami Heat in 2014 NBA Finals to claim the fifth championship in franchise history and a Tim Duncan's illustrious career. The next year, I believe they got bounced in the first round, if I remember correctly, by the Clippers. In 2016, they got bounced in the second round by the by the Oklahoma City Thunder, and Tim Duncan re- subsequently retired. Retired an, an NBA legend, an icon. You know, he was the assistant coach on the Spurs for last last year, I believe. And I think he should be... And it, a lot of people want that, that woman, Becky Hammond, to get the job. I think Tim Duncan should get it. Okay, and of course, last but not least, the late, great Kobe Bean Bryant. Okay, he was drafted 13th overall by the Charlotte Hornets and was subsequently traded to the Los Angeles Lakers. Where he spent the next 20 years, you know, building his legend and building his legacy. You see young Kobe here with the fro, Froby. Okay, of course, when he was drafted, he was teamed with Shaquille O'Neal, and they had instant beef, you know, reports of fights and mad tension, but, you know, somehow they overcame all that. In 2000, they won 65 games, Shaq was the MVP, and the Lakers won the championship. You see Kobe and Shaq with the finals MVP and the championship trophy. Okay, then 2001, they did it again. 2001 Lakers, arguably one of the greatest teams of all time. They swept everybody in the playoffs. They swept Portland in the first round, the Kings in the conference, fi- or in the conference semifinals, the Spurs in the semi in the conference finals, Allen Iverson went thermonuclear to get Game One, but then they def- demolished the 76ers the rest of the way to repeat. The next year they swept the New Jersey Nets in order to threepeat. You know, 2003 they lost to the Spurs, and 2004 lost to the Pistons in the finals. Got their ass with like, <laughs> and Kobe didn't hit that shot to win it in overtime to send it to overtime in Game Two, and they then win in Game Two in overtime. They would have got swept, man. But that that would have been crazy. They would have got swept, but. Of course, Kobe and Shaq had a severe falling out in the aftermath, and Phil Jackson didn't want to coach Kobe's ass, and Rick Fox didn't want to play with Kobe, so he retired. You know, 2004-2005, they missed the playoffs. Lakers missed the playoffs, but Phil Jackson came back. Came back, and that season, Kobe had probably the best season of his career statistically. He averaged 35 points a game. You know, he had scored 81 on the Raptors that season. He um scored 81 on the Raptors. You know, I think... He, I think it was the year he had 62 points in three quarters. He had 12 threes against Dallas. Like Kobe was just off the was playing out of his mind that year. And they went up, and of course, here's the iconic moment. He hit the game-winning shot in overtime over the Phoenix Suns to go up 3-1. And subsequently, they lost that series. 2007, they lost in the first round. But 2008, they get Pal Gasol. They get and- Andrew Bynum grows up. They get quite more pieces. Derek Fisher, I believe, returned. And Kobe Bryant was named the league MVP in 2008. Okay, and like I said, when talking about Kevin Garnett, they lost in the NBA Finals. 2009, Kobe had arguably an MVP year. You know, he led the Lakers back to the championship glory. They defeated the Orlando Magic in five games. 2010, in one of the best NBA Finals I've ever watched, they defeated the Boston. They got the revenge of the Boston Celtics, defeating them in seven. And Kobe was in Finals MVP both times, 2009 and 2010. Of course, there's the iconic image of Kobe Bryant standing on top of the scores table, looking at him, screaming to the audience, yeah, and hold number five in the air for his fifth championship. Of course, here's the image of his last game. I believe it was on April 13th of 2016. I remember watching that shit. Man, all those celebrities there, man. You had George Lopez, Kanye, Jay-Z, Shaq. Everybody was there. And my man scored 60 on the Utah Jazz. And after that, Kobe Bryant retired. 2017, he... He won an Academy Award for Best Short Film, Dear Basketball. Got both his numbers retired, 8 and 24. You know, I don't know what they're going to do with the statue. I don't know. Personally, personally if, it, if it were me, if I were the Lakers, I have this as the statue if I'm the Lakers. But, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out. You know, as we all know, on January 26th of 2020, Kobe Bryant passed away at the age of 41. Him and his young daughter and seven other people. God bless all their souls. You know, can't bring them back. It's very unfortunate, but... Yeah, but Kobe Bryant's going to be immortalized. Immortalized on today, on Saturday. Five-time champion, two-time finals MVP, league MVP, 18-time All-Star, four All-Star game MVPs, in which the trophy's named after him. 11 All-NBA first teams, nine All-Defensive first teams, a two-time scoring champion. You know, Kobe Bryant, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, you are all legends. 
I miss watching all y'all play. And congratulations to all y'all. Right? See ya.